Statistically speaking, Southeast Asian Americans suffer the most from anti-Asian abuse, a new study shows, and we're going to break it down and talk about it. Yeah, this is a NBC News article that is going viral on Reddit right now. It is titled, Southeast Asian Americans face the brunt of racist attacks amongst Asians in the U.S. A new study finds, Andrew, that new study is the 2024 TAF status report. Let's just take a look at some uh, stats right here. So this is Asian Americans versus Black Americans versus Hispanic Americans versus White Americans. However, Andrew, it gets a lot more granular and broken down per group. It gives you a macro pan-Asian American stat, but then it goes East Asian Americans, South Asian Americans, Filipino Americans, Southeast Asian Americans experience the most mm. uh, feeling uncomfortable, whether it's in social media spaces, neighborhood, workplace, at school, and uh, also uh, between the most of the mongoloid Asians in terms of racial, uh, someone has called me a racial ethnic slur in the past year, and someone has threatened to physically assault me in the past year. Southeast Asians rank the highest. Right, so what we're gonna do is we got eight different points on how Southeast Asian Americans might experience uh, racism differently than East Asians. This is also heavily based off the comment section that we went through. We analyzed some comments, given our thoughts. Uh, so please hit that like button, check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys if this is something that interests you. Um, obviously, the stats are here and the stats are coming from polling a lot of people. So, you know, that's fairly scientific. Let's I would talk say about this, I mean, immediately as a East Asian, quote unquote, like from a very academic family who grew up primarily around Southeast Asians, I feel like we have some unique personal insight into this. But real quick, I just want to get into the news stories. Andrew, last week, there was two Filipino uh, older security guards that got attacked randomly in the streets of uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, the Filipino mom who was attacked during at the peak of COVID, um, the Filipino man who was slashed in the face, and uh, Vicha Rantana Paki, RIP to him, who was mm -hmm. killed also, at, I, I would say, towards the beginning of yeah. the, the Asian hate movement during yeah. COVID. Not to mention that lady who got attacked outside of the apartment building in Hell's Kitchen, New York. Um, that was pretty bad, too. And, you know, so it's definitely like it definitely when you think about it, it does stand out. But I do think one thing before we continue, I do think it's interesting how in this study they separated Filipino Americans from Southeast Asian Americans, Southeast Asian Americans, they're counting as Vietnamese, Cambodian, Lao, Hmong, Mian, uh, uh, Thai. Thai, Malaysian, uh, Indonesian, you know. I guess more, they wanted to separate it out because of the mainland, sure. mainland Southeast Asian. Sure, right? oh, it's probably including Burmese as well. Right, right. Um, I guess... A couple quick thoughts before we get into the eight different points about, I think that uh, the internet was talking about this, like how East Asians and Southeast Asians experience racism differently. I think overwhelmingly they experience it the same way, but I do think there's some minutia there. What do you think constitutes as hate speech or slurs? You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, Go back to China. That would be baseline, right? Obviously the slurs you get called, the C word, the G word. Uh, you, uh, you s dirty Asian. That's, I mean, that's a slur technically. Yeah, you know what I mean? The C word. Yeah. The G word. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, I think slur can come in different ways and it also, you know, you just kind of know when something's racist. Uh, another point, I don't think that the average American, let alone the average person who attacks an Asian can tell the difference between an older Asian American, whether they're Southeast Asian or East Asian. I don't think there's any real differentiation made, mm, but I no. do think stylistically when I was growing up uh, younger, like I guess like stylistically, I would say Southeast Asians, and it was more true back then, would dress different from East Asians. Sure. Like East Asians would dress more white and Southeast Asians would dress more black. But that was just, I'm just saying what was true in the youth. I feel like all styles have sort of merged together for Gen Z. Um, a lot of people were talking about how in, in the comment section, Andrew, there's an Asian hierarchy that may make Southeast Asians not even fully feel comfortable in fully Asian spaces. Yeah, I do think these numbers when it comes to Southeast Asians feeling unsafe or uncomfortable, okay, unsafe and uncomfortable are two different levels, but this is people who felt unsafe or uncomfortable. And I think a lot of Southeast Asian Americans don't even feel fully comfortable around all other East Asians. And that's a message to the East Asians out there, which I know that I think a lot of them try to be inclusive and try to be Pan-Asian, but a lot of them cannot uh, shuck away or turn away that like 
old school hierarchy from the motherland. And I get it. Sometimes people are immigrants from those countries. So why would immigrants from a bunch of different countries all of a sudden just kumbaya and all be friends and see things exactly right. the same when they come here? That that Yeah, sometimes that happens. That's understandable. But honestly, I think East Asians could do a better job. Yeah. And I just don't think that they have that experience of like going through things. If you guys are growing up in kind of a uh, urban environment, everybody's got to stick together. Yeah, um, yeah, but I mean, it, but like, if you're not growing up in the environment, you don't even know that that's how it is. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that's even a lot of East Asians don't have as much experience teaming up with other Southeast Asian kids on something, you know, or being friends in an actual true way. So, right, right, right. Anyway, let's just get into the points. Uh, some of these we pulled. Um, people see all Asians as Chinese, and Chinese right now are bad. Can you get away with trying to sell it right before you're about to get attacked? But I'm a good Asian. Don't attack me. I'm not Chinese. That seems like something that probably people wouldn't do. Ha like, if you're what, about to get you, attacked. Do you or, think that that would work? You mean, let's just say verbal attack. Because, like, physical attack is like, you're going to react. Totally I, I think in a physical attack, that person does not care if you are from the richest family in Tokyo or the poorest family in Cambodia. Listen. They want to attack an Asian looking person. Listen, I think for 90% of the verbal attackers out there that want to disrespect you and threaten you, I don't think they care even if you're Chinese or if you're not Chinese. Like even if you say, yo, I'm not Chinese, I'm Vietnamese or yo, I'm not Chinese, I'm Korean. I mean, I know a lot of people, they want to say like, oh, I'm not even Chinese. Why would you call me that? I'm like, dude, these crazy people, they don't even care. Right, right. Well, there was a lot of discussion on the internet of saying like, is there even good Asians and bad Asians? Should we go by the geopolitical scale? Someone said it only works if you're Korean or Japanese, but even then it barely works. Yeah, I mean- I think that is true though. I do think there is a small minutia of like uppity Americans that would like be like, oh, okay, you're one of the good ones. You're Japanese and Korean, but everybody uh, else is bad. Yeah, you know, you never, never underrate uh, people, the little bit of soft power that Japanese and Koreans have right now that maybe someone crazy, maybe they might see it a little differently, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Anyways. I mean, it, it, just to quickly address the blaming China thing, I think that it was way more the 50, 60 previous years and all the wars in Asia that, that make people like hate like the Asian look. It's not, it, there is some of the modern aspect of it, but it's so com complicated. You know, maybe some Koreans, I know they blame mainland Chinese people, Taiwanese people blame Cantonese people, Cantonese people blame rural mainlanders from Hunan and Mao and all this stuff for all, you know what I mean? It's, it's so hyper nuanced and just, it's, it's for another video, but maybe I'll make one addressing that. Point number two, Southeast Asians are much more likely to be living in a low income neighborhood and those typically may have higher probabilities of crime rate or aggressive behaviors. Right. And this was like a stat. Uh, this is a well-known stat, but this is also what they mentioned in the official report well, as possible the, yeah, reasons. This was the quote from the official Southeast Asian Resource Action Center. It all depends on socioeconomics, where people are living, where they're commuting, where they're working. That is probably a big factor. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's a big factor. This guy said that is mentioned as a possible reason in the article financial status. The poor Asian experience is completely different than the upper middle class preppy Asian experience. Yeah. But uh, but again, no matter your social class of being Asian, there are still times you feel uncomfortable and still times that you face microaggressions, even in the boardroom, and, even at your Fortune and, 500 yeah, company. And we but yes, I can imagine on a street level... It is worse. And we knew this, uh, or we know this rich Chinese kid from Irvine, and he landed in New York City, and he got robbed the first week that he was here. And it probably was something that was never going to happen to him in Irvine, California. Um, somebody said, when we can't get out of the hood, we and plus we look different from the regular Asians at university. I'll say this, man. As somebody who's East Asian, but spent a lot of time around a lot of different types of Asians, you know, Harvard Asians to the Asians in the hood, uh, it's like... We, we, we they, the experiences are pretty different. And I just think we have to see the respect and the humanity in each side's experience. It's not just like, oh, the geek side is all the best. And it's not like the street side is all the best, even though, of course, overwhelmingly in Confucian culture, the geek side is more higher class and it's better. But it's like, you gotta, everybody gotta like see each other's humanity. Point number three, uh, this is a comment from a bougie guy from the Philippines. He said, I think that East Asians tend to highly self-segregate, and if they venture outside of those safe circles, um, they just, um, th they never venture outside of those safe circles that they segregate themselves into. Andrew, do you have a comment on that? 
Like, this is what a Filipino guy noticed about when he moved to America. Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, I don't want to say across the board. I think there's a lot of East Asians that hang out with a lot of different people, especially in cities like New York. You know, it's a very diverse place. I see people walking hand in hand with all different types of people. But I would say that is something that uh, a lot of East Asians, they like their bubble. Well, they either go back to Asia a lot. They either have their East Asian bubble here or they only other hang out with like really nice, like white, white people. Caucasian-ish like, uh, people. Like grad school whites. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I noticed that when Southeast Asians blend with other cultures, it's almost like a real adoption. Like they're not that saturated of a sponge and they soak up whatever they're adapting to at a very authentic level. Mm -hmm. But of course it depends, you know, whether you uh, sponging up the streets or you sponging up the geeks. And then um, I just feel like sometimes, you know, East Asians and specifically Chinese people, they're so deeply saturated with Eastern culture. It's almost hard to fully adapt more than a surface level to another culture mm -hmm. that's what i feel and like there's pros and cons to everything guys point number four east asians get a lot of microaggressions but more in spaces that are considered a little bit more blue collar mm -hmm. uh do you agree with that i think that as an east asian gr who grew up around a lot of southeast asians they are less i think my southeast asian friends were less likely to get called like a geeky shrimp dick because they themselves had like more fight to their look you know what I mean? Like people wouldn't feel as comfortable saying that to them, but I could see them also uh, going through more, a lot more street stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it just depends on your fish bowls, right? Um, somebody said that Japanese and Korean, and to a lesser extent Chinese culture, do have some cultural cachet in America. People know about anime, K-pop, Mulan, Kung Fu, but when you ask people about Southeast Asians, they only know about wars, ladyboys, the jungle, and male order brides. This is a comment from a Southeast Asian, by the way. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I do think the general public, if you say the word Southeast Asian, they don't really know what you're saying. They'll be like, what do you mean, South Asian? Because Southeast Asian is not, it's not even, first of all, that term is actually, I feel like, used most amongst other Asians. Right, you're saying that this is an internal Asian term, almost like Cuban exiles, that's really something only Latinos. Like, like I talk to even other Asians sometimes and they misspeak and they refer to Southeast Asians as South Asians. And sometimes I jump in, I'm like, hey, I actually, I don't want to correct you, but South Asians would be referring to Indians, Daisy people, Bangladeshi people. Right. And then Southeast Asians is this and this and this. But I just, people, their language is not like that accurate, to be honest. So I, I come across that I, all the time and I don't. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I want to correct them. So. I notice a lot of people do not really know the difference between Siberian Asians, East Asians, like a Taika Dai, Craw Dai, and then an Austronesian, and then to a Melanesian. I got the whole chart right here, guys. Uh, they all experience life in the West differently, statistically and anecdotally. Um, point number six, Filipinos say they got verbally and physically attacked the least out of all Asians. Yeah, which is uh, interesting because if you think about all the high-profile attacks, uh, quite a few, like we mentioned earlier in the video, do involve people of Filipino descent, but... This, this may be the younger ones polled as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, it could, it depends on age, but also I think that maybe Filipinos, I don't know, they generally have like, uh, they generally are a little bit more like uh, uh, mixing with other groups of people. Maybe they know how to communicate or maybe they... Yeah, I mean, it was a Western colony, yeah. more Western religions. I mean, I, they don't all appear to look like a Chinese person, so if an angry crazy person's looking for a Chinese person, maybe they skip over their certain Filipinos. I, I think the Chinese Filipinos that look Chinese that are even from the Philippines, I, I would imagine they still get treated different than somebody else, though. Yeah, no, in, no. In, in different ways. I'm not saying all. Oh, for sure. The, the more Chinese you can pass for, the more likely you're going to get hate. Right. Uh, point number seven. East Asian themselves may discriminate against Southeast Asians due to stereotypes about darker skin and possibly being from less economically developed countries. This was uh, a huge discussion in the Reddit thread. Yeah, I mean, I think this obviously comes from people not growing up with uh, friends and making friends with other people. I mean, this applies to almost any racial group, guys. Like, if you cannot figure out a way to have make friends with these people and joke about it and share culture, yeah. you're, all, you're, dude, just... And yeah. also, you got to understand, in America, it's a flat social structure. It's not just about, like whose country got like GDP per capita or like global trade deals or geopolitical related. It's like, yes, that stuff, it can affect your career at a company because then you can work in that division that's like cross global. But in terms of your day-to-day -day 
in everyday life and going out to get a drink at the bar or just any sort of like regular life thing, it does not matter at all. Yeah, I, I would honestly say for 90% of Asian Americans, judging another Asian American on their motherland's country's economy makes zero sense for like 99% of people. Right. Unless you work in that country and you need to only make friends with other potential business partners. Right, right. But other than that, it's idiotic. Right, especially on like a friend to friend level. Um, the last point that I noticed is that there were a lot of Southeast Asians in the Reddit comment section advocating for self defense and gun ownership. Um, I'll say this, man. I just think that it's a decision that everybody's got to make for themselves. You got to take the look, uh, what's a normative behavior for your state and what are the laws and castle doctrine. But yeah, I do think that. You got to analyze, everybody should analyze their probable risk exposures for the fishbowls that they spend the majority of the time in or that their family is exposed to or spends the majority of the time in. And you just got to make your own reads because changing culture and society and even having a lot of police and over-policing is very controversial. But you know what, Andrew, you're, you are in control of? Your own strength, wisdom, and radar for life. Mm. Like you're, for you. Not society, not even your community. That's, it takes mm. a lot of work to change that. A lot of like different hands moving together. It's like moving pyramids. But you mm. as a person. Um, ultimately, Andrew, this is my takeaway. I think that the, the um, explanation they gave in the report was pretty much, it makes sense. It's socioeconomic. I do want to th say that I, I think the biggest gap between perception of uncomfortability was East Asians in corporations mm -hmm. versus Southeast Asians still feeling uncomfortable in corporations. And I feel like East Asians, like you said, Andrew, that's maybe an area of opportunity that they could help out in. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I think that uh, East Asians, man, it's not all about you. It's not all about you. And it's not all about you because uh, honestly, there's actually, a, including Filipinos, there's a lot of Southeast Asians in America, a ton. Yeah. And uh, so I think that people just need to make friends with different people. And it sucks to hear that there's Asian Americans that are still discriminating slightly, which I don't think happens all the time, but even slightly against other Asian Americans is too bad. So go out there, make some friends. And, and yeah, this issue is uh, it's it's good to point this out. I think it's good to talk about. So you guys let us know in the comments down below what you guys think about all this. Hey, listen, guys, there's always a hyper simple bullet point explanation for things like the Samsung Galaxy summary. And then there's the more granular information, different styles of information appeal to different types of people. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace.